Welcome back to Plus Politics. The atmosphere in a dope state has taken a new turn as the impeachment of the Speaker and that of the Deputy Speaker of the state by 17 lawmakers took place shortly after the state assembly complex was cut off by security operatives. 14 out of the 17 members whose seats were previously declared vacant were first sworn in before the impeachment took place. However, we ask, with these moves stand when being weighed by the law? Joining us to discuss this is a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Chino Ubiago, who is the director of Legal Defense and Assistance uh, Project, led up. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, please. Uh, we've, we just listened to... Uh, the two devices argue this issue of whether it is constitutional or not constitutional, and we decided to go outside the political class to hear a senior advocate of Nigeria, and probably will be joined later by G.T. Ogunye, to help us dissect what is going on. What constitutes, how can an impeachment process be carried out? Is it possible, is it legal for impeachment or legislative action to take place outside the complex of the uh, legislative house? Well, thank you very much, Kyle. I, I think it's important to locate what is going on in those states outside politics. The, the, the political actors in those states, represented by Adam and the present governor of Asaki, now, what is going on in the Dodo House Assembly is the cause of what happened in the Republic of Nigeria, where there is always a counter impeachment. And the speaker has said that the power is created in the heart of Assembly should be the purpose which the business of the House Assembly should take place. That's all. So if there is an impeachment that takes care of us, or in any other place outside the House of Assembly, without the mess in the House of Assembly, it is unconstitutional. Okay. Thank now, you. Now, the same thing happened in another So the court says, without provision of uh, Without, without the mess being present and there's including the state for House of Assembly, it is going to be so the law is great that you can just go to any hotel and swear in so and have removed the speaker. That, that is the law of the Supreme and the Supreme has reaffirmed that. Okay. But having said that, I think it's important that the political actors in those states should be fair to those state people and leave politics aside and focus on developing the, the, the state. Because in the last two or three years, all we have seen is a fight between Adam Sussimole and, and uh, the government of our state. And I think that has been a, a very dangerous mission. And we hope that the September election will not result in electoral violence. Okay, thank you. Uh, before you even go into the advice, we still want to get some clarity because uh, quite a number of people are probably taking side without even knowing what the law actually says. So still looking at it, uh, you were very clear, very unequivocal about what the law says on that. But can we also do a kind of reverse to the way some lawmakers were you know, inaugurated, how they were sworn in. Some believe that should I constitute a house that should go ahead as a different arm of government? Looking at nine, they were sworn in then, and about uh, 14 thereabout were not present. And this thing happened, according to one of the guests, he said on parliamentary hour, around 9.30 p.m. in the night. Can you explain that to us? Well, what is important is that there is a quorum. 
and the constitution provision about code is one third. And once you, you read the trace of a guru, you can integrate a house. The what is the point that the Supreme Court has said that the integration of the house being the premises designated in the Gazette of the, of the, of the state government for sitting of the House of Assembly. If you go outside those in, in, in the United Gazette, then there's a problem. So, in the House of Assembly, in um, uh, 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 a number of House of Assembly people that are that from the core, it's, it's legal. Now, the question, from the point of making now that the House of Assembly has moved to a different location, that's not a location designated in the Gazette for the City of House Assembly, there's a legal problem to that. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let me quickly uh, bring in G.T. Oguye, who is joining us in this conversation. So, G.T. Oguye, I'm fully aware that you're following the development in Ado State. Uh, we don't have much time. Can you just give us some kind of summary on who is er erring in, on the side of the law and who is actually staying within the confines of the Constitution? Looking at what is going on in those stage, Mr. G.T. Ogunye. What we've heard from the one is a travesty of the democratic process. All the parties have heard. And so you can't even be talking about the parties who is right in the eye of the law. Look, there can be no justification for the illegitimate inauguration of the house starting from the proclamation section 92 of the constitution makes it very clear that the leadership of the house of assembly following an inauguration shall be constituted from amongst all the members of the house. Go check it out. Eight members of a 24-member house cannot selectively hold a purported inauguration and claim that the are electing amongst themselves the leadership of the house. That's a travesty. So what we've had is a cocktail of illegalities. Just as one may say, the 14 couldn't have legitimately constituted themselves into a house elsewhere, you know, create a maze, uh, elect among themselves a, a speaker and a deputy speaker. I'm saying that right from day one, you cannot selectively proclaim a house and then be fishing for legal pretest. Go to court, present the matter, and say, Yes, the court has said that my proclamation is right. Your proclamation is not right. A proclamation that excludes 14 members of the house in operation cannot be right in a 24-member house. So this is not democracy. And what are the excuses? Because right from the beginning, the governor wanted to control the house, have his own speaker, have his own allies in control so that it will not be impeached, as he's saying now. So how can you, because of fear of impeachment, subvert another half of government? So it's not democracy. Mr. Goye, you did say that uh, all parties erred. So where have the APC guys also erred? But I've told you. I've told you. Okay. I I'm, I'm looking at the current issue now. People would say that uh, denying the people representation for almost a year, that have we done anything wrong by making sure that we, we get to represent our people. Now they've even given an order closing the old bank account leading to the, I mean, that uh, is owned by the State House of Assembly. So do you really think that will hold water in any way? Or we are having it, another illegality on illegality? These are not, 
these are not strictly speaking issue of law. What is going on is politicians are you giving legal sophistry going to court just as in the case of when we are going to have the primaries or when they were having an infight and everybody was going to court to purchase another until the courts, the leadership of the courts started telling judges not to be dabbling into those matters. That's what is being done. I'm saying that look, 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 let, let, let's be let's be let's be clear about this matter. My position is that right from the beginning, once you want to do a proclamation, give notice to all the members, let that proclamation hold, let inauguration be hold. hold. So if, if you have any problem with the member that they are not going to support you as a governor, go sort it out democratically by persuasion. It's not by annexation of the second arm of government, the legislative arm of government. And then you shot out 14 out of 24. Where is that done? And those ones couldn't sit with them. And what is ideally that they should sit together and be doing whatever they are doing? I, I find it very strange that anybody can be saying that that is okay. It may be okay to anybody, but it's not okay to me. And so what we've had now is that the other side, the APC factions and all that, they are forcing the issues. They are meeting the place that is not a house. They are electing their own leaders. They are forming a parallel legislative arm and all that. So that's why I said we are having a cocktail of illegalities right from the one, right from the inauguration. Okay. So um, this, you have painted a very, very, uh, a very serious, uh, a worrying situation that we have. And uh, we can only ask, what is the way out? Can you help me out in 30 seconds? The way out is that this shouldn't have been allowed to fester to this extent. If you have a leadership in a country and... And, 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 and you're not going to allow a house to be inaugurated. Things will have been corrected at that level. But at this late hour, the parties can still shoot their words, their sword, and come together and then have one thing else. Why am I saying this? The members of the House of Assembly, their tenure will last in 2023. It is by default that we're having a governorship election now. So they will survive whoever, whether it is the governor that is going to be returned or the other person is going to. Okay. So their mandate is longer than what it is now. So they should come together really and then ensure that the house you know, moves together as one whole. Thank you for your time, though short, but quite insightful. Mr. G.T. Oguye, a legal practitioner. And we also want to say thank you to Mr. Chino, Obiagu, we will understand uh, the network just uh, filled. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria and also the director, Legal Defense and Assistance Project, led up. Thank you for your insight on this conversation. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us, our viewers. We will take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. For many close political watchers, this move is not new, and it is almost certain it will not be the last. How many impeachments have been obtained by the courts, and do these rulings serve as deterrent to the guilty parties? The answer is in the negative. In clear terms, the two warring parties have flagrantly disobeyed the law and turned logic upside down. How do you describe an executive governor who swore in state lawmakers at all hours of the day just to enthrone his stooge? How do you justify the Nollywood series where COVID-19 is being used as an alibi to perpetrate illegality by denying another arm of, uh, I mean, another arm of government 
legislative function? Or how do you describe the clear partisanship from the ruling party at the federal with others flying from the AGF to protect some lawmakers from one faction? However, this, however this turned out is of interest not only to political history, but to judicial precedence. If there will be deterrence, the guilty party should not just lose the suit. The guilty party must be punished. Only then we may have a semblance of justice and fairness. And that's my take tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns on Monday. Have a great weekend. I am Kayode Ladeide saying bye.